I programmed another thing, and this time it's not a Minecraft bot. It's a Minecraft house generator, which is actually something I've done before, like a year ago, but it wasn't very good. This time the house generator is a lot better. I wanted to start by giving a brief overview of how both the old and new generators work, followed by a more in-depth look at how the new generator works. Starting with the old generator, which worked by first randomly generating two rectangles that overlap each other, which would be the floor plan. Then, the walls would be extended up to the roof height, which was determined by the distance to the centre of each of the rectangles. There were a few different functions that could be used for different roof shapes, but they all worked like this. And finally, the type of block used was determined by the block palette and which part of the house it was on. As a quick overview of the new process, the new generator works by first generating a bunch of rooms, which is used to make a floor plan. Then it adds a few details like doors and windows, and finally generates a roof. The biggest problem with the old generator that I want to address with the new one is the variety of houses. While it was true that the houses it generated were all different, they all looked kind of the same. This problem probably wasn't very noticeable in the original video because I only showed that one house. So to give you a better idea of the variety between the houses with the new generator, here's a bunch of houses that I've just generated. These aren't cherry picked, so you can probably see a few problems with them. As you can see, there's quite a bit of variety between the houses. Like, it's not a crazy amount of diversity, and they all still look somewhat generic. But that's something we can fix in a future video. I guess it's time for that in-depth look at how the new generator works. We start with the 5x5 grid, which represents where the rooms can go, and we place a room in the center. Each of the neighboring spaces are then added to the list of potential rooms. We pick a location from this list and add a room to it, making sure to remove that location from the list, so that we don't place a room in the same place twice. And we add the new room's neighbors to the list of potential rooms. We can keep doing this until we have enough rooms. I decided that houses will have somewhere between one and six rooms. Now let's make a floor and walls. As you can see, those rooms, as I've been calling them, should really be called segments or something, since they don't really translate to actual rooms, just bits of house. For the door, we always place it in the frontmost room in the middle row. Now that might sound kind of bland, but in practice it works pretty well. For anyone that's interested, the way the program figures out the frontmost room is by first checking this square, there isn't a room here, so we move to the next square down. This time there is a room, so this is where the door goes. If there wasn't a room, we'd continue moving down until there was. Next up, windows. They were a bit of a challenge, and I'm not sure my solution is the best. So if you can think of a better one, please share it in the comments. The solution I came up with was to use what I call a window map, which is essentially a pattern for the window that wraps around the building. Let's use this window map as an example. It wraps around the building like this. It's on all the outer walls except the section with the door. I have some code that can generate a bunch of different window maps. Here's another one for comparison. The next problem to solve is generating the shape of the roof, which would be easy, except in this case I don't want to generate a specific style of roof. I want a system that can produce a variety of roof styles, which makes things a bit harder. My solution is to have multiple different values that impact the roof height at any given point. For example, the distance to the edge of the roof and the distance to the center of the house. Add these values together and you get the height of the roof. If we take each of these values and multiply them by a random weight, we can change how prominent the resulting features are. And we can put the sum of the values through various transformation functions to change the overall shape of the roof. Something I haven't done but would be a huge improvement would be adding stairs and slabs to roofs to make them a little smoother. Perhaps that's something for a future video. The final thing we need to talk about is block palettes. 
They determine which block is used in different parts of the house. What you are currently looking at is one of the pallets, with a cobblestone floor, oak planks for the walls and bricks for the roof. Here's the same house with some different pallets. I added a bunch of different pallets, but this isn't something I'm very good at, so I'll have to keep redesigning them until I have a handful of good ones. That basically covers everything. I made a web page for this project, so you can try it out in your browser. There's a link in the description. There's a new house every time you load the page, and there's a button for generating new houses, and another button for taking a screenshot. I'm also including a few extra details about the generator on there. Quick disclaimer, it might not work properly on mobile devices. I haven't tested. Consider giving this video a like, and subscribe if you haven't already.